Hey guys, welcome back to our video series on applications of stochastic dynamic programming in continuous time. In this video, we're going to work through Merton's classic asset allocation problem where our consumer is choosing to invest between a risk free asset and a risky asset that follows some uh, Brownian motion there. Let's go. Merton's portfolio problem could be written as follows. We have an individual who's looking to maximize his utility over an infinite horizon. He's endowed an initial amount of wealth and faces the choice to allocate his income to consumption, investment in a risk-free asset, and a risky asset. Mathematically, the problem could be proposed as follows, where he's looking to maximize his expected uh, infinite series of discounted utilities, and his utility function is going to be some very specific CES form that we're going to have here just to go and make the algebra simple, subject to you know an initial wealth endowment, which is W0, and our law of motion of wealth, which is how does this wealth move over time, is according to how he goes and he invests in a risky asset with a return of A, a risk-free asset with a return of S, and his consumption that he's going to have at each moment. Um, and we're going to note also that our risky asset is going to go and have some variation in it. I put down uh, here you know, what the definition of each one of these terms are. Ultimately, we're looking to solve for what is our policy for consumption and theta, or really our policy functions or our control functions, really. So the way that we're going to go and solve this is going to be as follows. We're going to write down our Hamilton-Jacobi-Bellman equation for this problem. We're going to take our first order conditions with respect to C and theta, that being consumption and our allocation parameter to our risky good. We're going to solve for our intermediate optimums parameterized by our value functions. We're then going to go and sub these intermediate optimums in our objective problem. We're then going to go and take a smart guess for what our value function V is. Um, if we were doing this on a computer, we can pick anything, but that would require iteration and we don't want to do this by hand. So we're going to go and take a smart guess. We're then going to go and solve for our time invariant policy or functions or control functions, C star and theta star. So step number one is that we're gonna write our stochastic Hamilton and Jacobi Bellman equation for this problem. So this is just, you know, the same cookbook formula that we're going and using from uh, the previous video there. Uh, step number two is that we're gonna take our first order conditions with respect to consumption and our parameter, which goes and determines the share of wealth allocated to our risky good. And we go and get the following result. We're then gonna go and solve for our intermediate optimums parameterized by our valued functions. Um, so that's gonna be C tilde and theta tilde, and we go and we get the following here. For step number four, we're gonna sub these intermediate optimums into our objective problem. Now, when we go and we do that, we wanna simplify this as much as possible till we get this result here. Now, the reason why this is important is because we're gonna use this to go and verify our guess and if it is a good guess because if this is a good guess then we should see no w terms in this expression once we go and we plug it in and work through the algebra in general um you know we could use any value for what our guess is going to be like we do in step number five but computationally it's going to go and take a longer term so for step number five we're going to go and pick this particular functional form that is going to be a times WB, right, which is similar somewhat to our preferences that we go and we have. Step number six is that we're going to go and solve for our time invariant policy functions or control functions for that being C star and theta star. Note that our first derivatives and second derivatives are going to be the following, and we're just going to go and plug it and chug it. So we go and we get these policy functions for consumption, and we're going to get this uh, rule for allocating um, our portfolio. So this thing is uh, you know, very important because we see that this portfolio allocation rule is only dependent right, on the parameters of our problems. Now, if we want to see if this solution goes and works, we're going to have to work through a lot more algebra here, which I've went in detailed on the slide. So we're going to go and plug that in and we're going to keep working it, working it, working it, working it until we see no W terms in there. Once we successfully eliminate W from our solution, we can say that our value function indicating our proposed solution to C star and theta works. So that is how you go and you finish this problem here. 
So um, like usual, I want to go and put in a better effort to go and actually thank my Patreon. So thank you everybody who's going and supporting me on Patreon, specifically uh, to my first $5 Patreon supporter, Gregory Choi. Uh, you know, it's been really a lot of help and a lot of motivation uh, for me to go and make these videos. If you want to go and support uh, these videos, please be sure to go and check me out on Patreon. Um, there's going to be some stuff that's going coming up. I might, you know, do some Patreon uh, benefits like, you know, Q&A or something like that. And uh, we'll see. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Take care.